And so uh, going to your next question, though, about the teacher vacancies. And honestly, that's a conversation in our district that we've been having all year. As a matter of fact, I'll uh, never forget, we were at uh, TASA, which is a Texas Association of School Administrators, of which I'm the president-elect of, and we had this, our huge conference as a convening of all the suits from all over Texas. And uh, the officers were doing a general session. And the what was top of mind for me is the fact that we were gonna have uh, teacher vacancies, and what were we gonna do in response to that? And so uh, we've been having those conversations and we've been getting prepared. And what I can tell you about the exact number today, uh, we're in a much better position than we were, uh, of course, months ago in January when it was top of mind and a couple of weeks ago. And of course, even a week ago and a day even makes a difference. So today we're at 270 vacancies. And so when you consider that we have over 80, we have 84 campuses, um, you have to put those kinds of things in perspective. And so um, we are really excited and really pleased at the progress that our HR department is making, as well as our campus leadership, how they've been intentional about thinking differently about attracting teachers. But then I must give kudos to our school board who also were uh, concerned as we were moving forward with this year and, and, and expressed the need to retain our, our employees. And so we're really excited that uh, we were Again, one of the, the first districts that put out and increased our first year teacher pay to uh, 61,000. In addition, a bold plan to, tr to retain our employees who've been here for um, many years. Uh, we have a retention bonus for uh, employees who've been here for over 10 years of $5,000. You've been here for over five years, it's uh, $3,000. And of course, one to four years, a retention bonus of $1,500. And while we recognize that money matters, <laughs> what matters even more is making sure that we're meeting the needs of our teachers and we are being um, intentional in um, making sure that we have the very best person in front of our, 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 our students. And so um, pre this year, because again, while it seems like it's a, a new topic, it's been a concern, a growing concern for those of us who've been uh, in this business. And so in recognizing that um, teachers have choices. And so when they have choices, then we've got to be even more intentional, those of us who are in the, uh, what I call the, the schools that are in the city. And I think our rural colleagues also have some challenges, but uh, because of, we, you have fewer people entering into the profession and you have fewer people who are feeling appreciated, you know. Um, Is that during, why oh, I have to ask you, because a parent asked this as a follow-up, is that why Aldean is losing so many good teachers and principals, a parent asked? Well, um, what I can tell you is, as far as principals, we've lost, at each year we have principals who can retire or who can go on to another district or make other choices. And what we've seen is many of them have done that. However, um, as we think about the ones who have gone on, we have to consider many things, many factors. Number one, we have to consider the fact that during a crisis, whether it's COVID and any other situation, our teachers are the first to respond. And during that period of time, we call them heroes. But the minute that season is over, we are also quick to blame our teachers for issues that many of them, most of them, all of them have no control over. And so um, what we wanna do here in Aldi and what we wanna make sure that the teachers who choose to live here, to work here, to make a difference here, we wanna make sure that not only are they compensated, but also the fact that we wanna make sure that they're appreciated. We wanna connect and ensure that we have a caring teacher in every class. And so we're doing many, we have different partnerships. We have a U of a, U of University of Houston downtown. We have a Grow Your Own for our bilingual teachers. We have a partnership with Prairie View A&M. Uh, we are working with U of H to recruit males of color. Really excited and really pleased. Uh, we have foreign exchange students who were hired uh, on a, a J-1 visa and uh, many of them are coming internationally from Colombia and uh, Honduras. Um, and so we're pulling out all the stops to get teachers in our district and not just teachers, effective teachers. I see. In the meantime, how will you fill the gap? Because you still have those vacancies and with a week to go, while I'm sure you will fill some more, how mm -hmm. will you fill the gap for those vacancies that will still remain come next week? And so uh, what I can tell you is the majority, if not, um, perhaps a high percentage, mostly most of our 
uh, campuses are fully staffed. And so the, the few campuses where we have a hard time maybe finding uh, English teachers has been one for us. And so when you look at our primary level, you look at our elementary level, perhaps they're almost fully staffed. And so really excited about that. At our middle and high school levels, where we're having a harder time um, maybe attracting those teachers who teach, uh, like I said, English and others, uh, we're being intentional about um, our recruitment efforts, including hiring uh, not only uh, retirees in our hard to fill positions, we uh, just sent out 500 cards to recently retired teachers from our district, the ones who retired in the last three years. And so we're getting a really positive response from that. And so many times on the dashboard, you will see 270 vacancies. But meanwhile, our principals already have a plan to make sure that we have a caring teacher in every single classroom. And what I can tell you is four of our campuses started uh, a couple of weeks ago and our teachers were at the door smiling. Our parents were excited to drop them off and uh, our principals were welcoming them in. And just like always across education, educators always meet the needs of our, our students in our community. So I have no doubt, no doubt that we'll have a caring adult in every classroom to welcome all of our students back on August 17th.